Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, depending on where you are on this beautiful planet of ours. My name is Jack Miller. I'm the president of Pacific College of Health and Science. Our guest today is the author of the book, Nourishing Life, The Yang Sheng Wei, published by Singing Dragon. She's been practicing Chinese medicine and teaching both in Ireland and internationally for the past 27 years. In fact, Deirdre was at our symposium last year. She's the head or was the head of the acupuncture department and principal lecturer at the College of Naturopathic Medicine in Ireland for 12 years. She was also the chairperson of the Irish Register of Chinese Medical Herbalism from 2011 to 2015. She's currently the educational director of the Lotus Institute, which is our good friend Lillian Bridges School of Face Reading. And Lillian was one of our master class presenters just last week. And you can see her lecture on our YouTube channel. Deirdre previously worked as a chef, including serving as a personal chef to the Beach Boys' Brian Wilson. She went on to teach other cooks how to use the healing power of healthy foods to help people recovering from alcohol and drug abuse and people also suffering from obesity. She currently runs her busy practice from her clinic in Black Rock in South Dublin, Ireland. Please welcome to the Pacific College Masterclass Series, Deirdre Courtney. Deirdre, take it away. Thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for inviting me to come and, uh, and do this talk. And, um, and I think it's a very important talk. I know for me as a practitioner who's not able to um, treat my patients and work hands-on with them. Um, I've been doing a bit of work by doing um, consultations through uh, Zoom and Skype and, um, and then um, trying to help advise them on um, what kinds of foods and what they can do through this time to help keep their immune system strong. And I think it's really important that we keep our immune system strong because when our immune system is strong, and, and, if, and that doesn't just mean eating the right foods, it's also about uh, you know, our mental health as well and our physical health, but that when our immune system is strong, that we hope then that if we are exposed to this virus right now, that we would be hopefully asymptomatic or have mild symptoms. And I think it's good to be able to give people information on certain things that they can do that they feel they have some control of their own lives because it's a very um, frightening time for a lot of people. And, uh, and the media and all the things we read brings up a lot of fear. And when we look at things that weaken our immune system in Chinese medicine and generally through a lot of research now through nutrition and lifestyle, and this is where Yang Shan comes in, we can see that fear and stress and anxiety can all have an impact on our immune system. And I, I, I think some of you are not Chinese practitioners. So when I talk about some of the terms in Chinese medicine, I'll explain it a little bit for you, but I've tried to keep it very broad. But in Chinese medicine, our Wei Qi is what we refer to as our protective Qi. And that is the Qi that it protects us from external pathogens in the body. And it is linked in Chinese medicine to the lungs, but also we need the digestive system in order to produce qi to help build wei qi. And we also need the support from our kidneys and our yuan qi, which is the beginning, the source qi that we have in order to also give that energy for the production of qi and then our wei qi. So qi is our energy, it's our life force, it, it's behind everything. And so when we're looking at somebody's immune system and we're looking at the face, because uh, the face will give us some information, we're gonna look at the cheek area for people who, for the lung area to see how well is somebody's immune system. So if you are working with people online and you can look there, you want this area here to be puffy, not sunken in. When there's a lot of lines in the cheek area here and it's sunken in, it shows that there is a weakness and a deficiency. 
And so we want to try and build that energy up. We also see lines that come down into the cheek area that are also related to grief or sadness. And in Chinese medicine, we would associate that emotion of grief and sadness with the lungs. And when we are going through uh, a, a grief or a loss of some type and it's marked our face, then it can sit on our lungs. And when it sits on the lungs, then we can't breathe properly and the Wei Qi then can't, uh, can't function properly and can't protect us. And it's not uncommon to see people who have had um, bereavements um, of some sort that get a chest infection or um, pneumonia or some sort of cough or something after that. It's quite common. I see it all the time in my clinic. So we want to look and we want to see that this area is being supported. And when we look at people and we like, I think there's a good thing about having to stop down and and having to stop because most of us have been going really uh, working too hard, all the time stressed. It's constant, constant. And so now there's an opportunity for people to slow down and to recuperate. So I can even see changes in my cheeks area in the last four weeks of being at home and not running around and not having to do things. I also notice changes in people's um, darkness under the eyes and that's related to the kidney energy. And, um, and you see these dark circles under the eyes. And I can see a lot of people because they're slowing down and they're sleeping more and they're relaxing and they're kind of going more with the flow as opposed to having to. Now, obviously it's not everybody because some people, you know, they have families and children at home, they're trying to school and trying to do all that. So that's uh, a little bit different, but we can see changes already in that. But it's um, this area here on the chin is related to also the kidney area. And um, this is an area that I'm seeing now a lot of grief and a, or a lot of um, fear is where we see in this area, sorry. And it goes uh, red or dimpling in this area. And um, I think that's also because people are picking up on the fear around them. And so not watching all the news, all the statistics, you know, not feeding that fear every day is really important and to watch this area. Now these areas, when we see these markings and we see the discoloration or we see the sunken in, is saying that the immune system is being compromised and, and therefore it's important that we strengthen that through lifestyle and that. And the digestive system is also really important because we make energy with the food we eat. And um, the digestive system is very much affected by worry and over worry. And so again, this whole media thing, watching the TV, the news, the statistics, doing the whole thing, and also people worrying about their family and you know, our jobs and what's gonna happen next, all of these things all have a direct effect on the digestive system. So, and, and then on our immune system. So if we can, uh, really try and work on balancing, you know, how we deal with everything in our lives right now, it will make a big difference to how our immune system stays strong. And again, I, you know, it's really important that we keep our immune system strong. With anxiety and stress, um, the problem is with that is it, it, it creates a lot of cortisol in the system and that in turn then has a direct effect on the whole metabolism in the body and how it's functioning. And then we start to have um, problems with the immune system. So there are foods I'm going to mention that are very good to support, um, you know, uh, release cortisol from the body and help um, move that. But I think it's really important that people start to um, slow down and think about what's stressing them out and what's causing them anxiety. I mean, there's an awful lot. People are very fearful about losing their jobs. They're missing people, their loved ones who are far away, they can't see them, that, that's creating grief and sadness. Um, and 
And then we're in confined. A lot of us are in spaces where we may not have a garden or we may not be able to um, go outside in nature. And so we have to try and figure out ways of bringing that into our lives. And so really stopping and being still and, and seeing how we feel and, um, and trying to, I find um, meditation really works for me. It just grounds me. It brings me down. I'm very lucky. I have a garden I can go out to. I connect with the plants and my flowers coming up. And that all helps bring down that level of an anxiety and stress. And also, I think it's really important to try and avoid being around negative energy. And, and this is a big problem because fear right now is bringing up a lot of old stuff in people. And I think people are lashing out in ways that they wouldn't have done before. And, and it's all of that sort of negative energy and um, panic uh, and all of that. And so we need to be very careful of looking at those um, stresses and those anxieties. And there's great stuff online that we can do to to help relax us. I know there's um, exercise classes for elderly people um, to do light exercise and things like that. But I think that we need to, um, you know, look at and stop and be still and to pay attention. Now, it's quite difficult because we live with other people. And so when we talk about yang shang in Chinese medicine and we talk about the principles of yang shang, we talk about them in terms of how do we interact with our environment and how do we work within what we have. And, and that is to do with our spiritual well-being. Um, it's to do with our um, connection with other people. It's to do with the foods that we eat. And it's basically not all one shoe fits everybody. And it's really to try and find out what it is that works best for you. And really, it's not until we stop and we pay, we pay attention to how we feel that we start to notice, you know, the things that are throwing us off balance, the people that upset us. I mean, sometimes we're just going so much, we're not conscious of of how we're interacting and, and how somebody's having an effect of us. And I think this is really important with food because you know we have an awful lot of diets out there and, and ways of eating that is meant to be you know, good. And um, you know, people try all these different types of diets, but, and it works for one person, it doesn't work for somebody else. And that's because not everybody is the same and not everybody needs to be fed in the same way. And so it's when we pay attention attention to how do I feel when I eat this food? How do I feel when I take this form of exercise? Do I feel better for it? Or, you know, do I feel, you know, exhausted or my knees are hurting me? You, we have to pay attention to our body and how we feel in order to know what direction we need to go in. And so be, this is a great opportunity for us to be able to stop and take stock and to, to hopefully when we start moving back out into the world and back into our lives and interacting things that we can be a little more conscious and a little more aware of what really works for us. And um, sleep is another um, uh, problem or another thing that can affect our uh, immune system and um, not getting enough sleep. Um, uh, it's, I think um, people are having more nightmares and dreams. And, you know, some people are saying it's because now we have, we're not so busy, we actually are remembering our dreams where when we're going all the time, we don't. But it's um, important that we still try to have some sort of structure about going to bed, about getting up. Like I set my clock up and I get up at eight o'clock regardless every morning or half seven, because if I don't get out of bed, I could sit in bed till 
11 or 12 o'clock reading or doing things. Now, that's okay if I'm a, all very much a water type of person. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on. And um, because depending on the type of energy we are, we'll say that certain activities suit us better. And definitely water is more going with the flow of things. They Water people like to stay in bed and read and do that. But for me, it's I need a bit of water, but it's not good. I need to get up and I need to be structured, but I also need time to hang out and, and relax. And um, so going to bed at regular times becomes very important. I think it's also really important that our environment that we sleep in is clutter free. Um, simple things like turning off the phones, all the screens, not having that blue light in your room and um, not having it too, too hot either. It's better for us to sleep in a cooler environment. Now, I know I'm talking to people from all over the world. So, you know, when I talk about some of these things, I'm relating them to me. I'm here in Dublin. The skies are blue right now. It does get a little bit cold in the evening time. Um, and some we're coming into our, our spring and summer where some people are going into winter. So again, you've got to work with whatever um, environment you're in and um, with what you have. I'm very lucky again. I said I have a garden to go out to so I can get some fresh air, which helps me then sleep. Um, I live in a beautiful area where I walk, but some people don't, they live in cities or they are in an apartment and so they don't have that flexibility. And I know exercise again and movement is really important. And I had one person who was on a balcony, this uh, elderly lady and our, our elderly are asked to cocoon in so they're not going out. So I had her on the balcony walking on the spot to get her exercise. So there's lots of ways we can we can get that movement in. And I think 15 to 20 minutes every day of movement will be good for us. Um, some people are used to doing much stronger and heavier types of, of workouts or running in that. And maybe that's going to be a little bit difficult for them to do that circuit, but maybe for some people who, who have that form of activity, they need to be careful because uh, over-exercising will also weaken the immune system. And where we see this a lot, and I see it a lot with people who are runners, um, it's, it, they get sunken in in this area. So for those of you who can't do your heavy, you know, running five kilometers or whatever it is that you do every day, maybe it's good for you to, to slow down a little bit and do less of that and a different form of exercise that supports you more than depletes you. And we need that movement for circulation and we need that movement in order to keep um, the blood flowing and our antibodies moving around our body and protecting us. Um, when it comes then to a balanced diet, as I said earlier, uh, it's really important to pay attention to how food affects you, um, how you feel after you eat. I think it's a very good opportunity for people because um, people are cooking more at home. And I noticed there's a lot more um, things online where people are sharing recipes and you can go online and look at YouTubes of people making food. But I think it's really important that we understand what foods that we need right now to help build and help keep our immune system strong. And I think one of the most important things, and it's one of the most important things in Chinese medicine, Chinese nutrition, is that it, the Chinese always believed that you eat a large variety of foods, incorporate as many different types of foods in your diet as possible. And, and therefore you're guaranteed to get your nutrients from somewhere. When we limit our intake of, of types of foods and we only eat certain types of foods and we limit that too much, there is a, 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 a worry that we might limit our intake in certain um, vitamins and nutrients that we need to fit the body and, uh, um, and to support the system. So really the wider range of foods that you eat, the better 
uh, it is. And what's what's great as well is is that you know when when I look at the food and I look at things like you know um, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc, which are really important things to keep the immune system strong right now. Um, and we hear a lot of talk about them using vitamin C in um, in the treatments uh, for the coronavirus and that. And um, you'll see that they're in a wide variety of foods. So, you know, zinc isn't necessarily as high in the in the vitamin C foods, but the uh, you know they're in other foods. So again, if you have your range, you're all you're going to have all of those things in your system, and therefore you're going to be in a better position. And these foods really need to be our fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables and, um, and move away from those ready-made um, high fat foods, fried foods, and um, the odd pizza is okay, but it's not really um, supportive to the system. And when we look at that um, being supportive for the system, and we talked about the spleen um, and the digest, I mean, the digestive system, which we talk about the spleen, and the spleen is very susceptible to getting damp. And, and for those who are not Chinese practitioners, damp is like a heaviness. It's a, it's, if you think of a damp environment, it's cloying, it's heavy, you're wading your way through it. And so damp um, sits in the body and it blocks the flow of qi. And it, it doesn't allow things to move fast or easy. And so the digestive system doesn't like, the spleen doesn't like to have a lot of damp. And the foods that can create this damp are things like iced cold drinks. The spleen doesn't like to be very cold. Um, dairy foods tend to be very mucus and damp forming. Um, what else? Um, dairy foods, ice cream, cheeses, things like that. Bananas, bananas also, like if you mush a banana up, it goes very mushy and globular, you know, it's kind of sticky. That kind of does the same thing in the system. So bananas are not great. Um, orange juice is really good if it's freshly squeezed and you drink it right away. But um, when we buy orange juice in containers and that have already been made up, it goes very globular and again can create this kind of damp environment in the system. So we want to make sure that we avoid those high fat fatty foods, the greasy foods, the deep fried foods, and also too much sugar foods is also um, the digestive system finds difficult. So our cakes and our buns and our biscuits. Now, again, I think everything in moderation, it's not that we shouldn't eat those foods at all. It's just that we need to be careful that we don't want to create damp. There has been, um, when you look at um, in Chinese medicine and you look at the pathogenic factors in the body related to this virus, damp, there is a damp component, um, evil damp, damp heat um, in the system. So it damp does is a factor here. And so avoiding foods that create damp would be very important. And again, when we think of damp as well, when we have extra weight on us, that extra weight is considered damp. It's heavy. We're dragging it around with us. And so we don't want to add more of that to it. And there are foods that are very good to clear that kind of damp and to help move that damp out of the body. And I'll go through those um, in a few minutes. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're supporting the digestive system and doing that. And in when we talk about eating foods from all ranges from, you know, whether, I mean, if you're a vegetarian, then you have to make sure you're getting your protein from other places. If you're vegan, it's the same thing. But when we eat a big variety, so lots of seeds, lots of nuts, lots of vegetables, lots of fruit, you're going to get all those. But again, to have what we would say in Chinese medicine, the all the four, five colors of the elements. And, um, and have that range and I work a lot with children with this and and what I try to do is get them to have their plate where they have a bit of red, uh, a bit of yellow, a bit of green, lots of green actually if possible, <laughs> a little bit of the dark uh, and, and then you know have um, um, 
uh, mushrooms or white foods and, and try and get them to have all the colors. And the digestive system, the color of which is the earth element is yellow and orange, but we don't want to eat too much of the, the, the sweet uh, orange and yellow foods or the processed ones like the chicken nuggets and the waffles and, um, and those types of yellow foods because they're not really supportive to the digestive system. We want to eat more foods like millet grain or um, brown rice or uh, squashes, um, you know, nice uh, uh, yellow vegetables, um, yellow squash, um, zucchinis, yellow zucchinis, corn, is very good. And so when we look at the element chart in Chinese medicine and we look at the uh, elements and the organs and the colors, it's really important that we integrate those colors into our plate. And I, I always get my patients to give me a, uh, a, an inventory of everything they eat for three days. And then I get my five color markers and I highlight underneath over the proteins, you know, the black foods, the, the red foods and everything. So they can see what colors they're getting most of. And, and to be honest, green is the most lacking, uh, uh, mostly of all of them. And we really need the greens because the greens are full of vitamin C, they're full of antioxidants, um, and they're really supportive um, for the body and the immune system. And uh, they're they're, they're anti-aging, they're, they've got everything in them. And so it's really important that we start to look at, um, at some of those foods. Now, some of the foods that boost the immune system, I just check the time, um, that are really good. Um, I've given you a list, green tea boosts the immune system. Um, it's very good. Um, uh, for infections. Um, it's also very supportive for the heart. Now, I think this is green tea is, I mean, green tea does lots of things and it's an amazing um, uh, tea to introduce, amazing herb to introduce into your diet on a regular basis because it has so many positive health effects, uh, anti-cancer, you know, the, it, 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 it's a lot. It's also really good for the blood and the blood vessels. And there is um, some um, information coming out again about the coronavirus and the possibility that it's also causing blood clotting. So we want to also have foods that, um, you know, help with that circulation. And um, so lots of antioxidants are really important. So they, um, we don't have lots of free radicals moving around. So green tea also um, it kills bacteria, it kills particular bacteria that is in our gums that actually it can be linked to heart disease. Hemp seeds are amazing. Um, I know that in some European countries, uh, they're not allowed use or they used to be allowed to have hemp, but hemp seed is um, a really, um, I consider it one of the supery kind of foods because you can use, you can make rope and clothes and everything out of hemp, but it's very good. It is high in protein and omega-3. So omega-3 fatty acids are really good for um, antioxidants and anti-inflammatory balance the hormones, but it also is high in gamma globulins, which is part of our first defense against the immune system in the immune system. So a really important um, thing to add in the diet. Um, I put it on my, I make granola sometimes myself and I put a, a big heap tablespoon on it or I throw it into a smoothie or I sprinkle it on a salad. There's lots of ways we can use that. Bee pollen is another amazing immune booster. It's one of the richest sources of all vitamins and nutrients of all the plants and um, uh, animal products that are out there. And bee pollen is, is an incredible thing to add in. And if you can get bee pollen local to where you live um, is really good because it will be very supportive. Um, especially for allergies and stuff like that. But, you know, be careful because if people do have allergies, they should just 
try a little bit first to see if they have don't have a reaction to it or not. And goji berries is a herb um, in the Chinese pharmacy. Most people know about goji berries now. Um, antioxidant, uh, also anti-inflammatory, really uh, supports the immune system. It, it supports a lot of the organs. It helps with the kidneys. It helps with the liver. Um, so um, very good um, to incorporate that in your diet. It also has an effect on the lungs and helps um, stimulate uh, and moisten the lungs. So if there's any dryness in the lungs, dry cough or anything like that, that will help moisten the area. Um, carrots. Carrots are very high in um, vitamin A, but also they are anti-inflammatory and they're very good for the throat. So any kind of sore throat or sensitivity in the throat, the carrots can be very good. Now raw are less sweet than cooked, um, but um, some people find it hard to eat them raw, but um, lightly steamed, don't overcook them is better. Um, tangerines also very good to benefit the heart or benefit the lungs and they also help moisten um, um, the lungs. So again, also if there's some dryness. And pears are one of these um, fruits that are really good for the digest, uh, for the lungs. And I recommend um, parents always to try and give their kids um, pears organic with the skin on because the skin is has got a lot of uh, valuable nutrients in it but really supportive for the lungs particularly good when there is a cough of any type or congestion in the lungs and so if anybody has a weakness in the lungs asthmatic or anything like that having pear um, it, put it in your salad eat it as a fruit whatever way you like it, but definitely important to incorporate it into your diet. Um, other foods that um, are very good to um, boost, sorry, I have another slide here to give me my information on just to the left, right of me here. Um, foods that clear damp. So I talked about the foods that, you know, the digestive system doesn't like and that it causes it to develop damp. We want to clear damp and particularly keep the lungs clear um, so that there's no congestion there and therefore the Wei Qi and, and, and the lungs can breathe and, and do their job. And so asparagus is very good. It clears damp and toxins um, in the lungs and it's also cooling. So it clears heat. So if there's any kind of heat toxins. And so when we talk about heat and phlegm and damp in the lungs, the phlegm might be more concentrated, might be, uh, it'll be yellow to green, and the person might be a little more hotter, getting a fever. We want cooling foods in order to cool down the body if somebody is getting hot or, or getting fever. So the asparagus is quite good to clear that heat. Celery is amazing for clearing heat. It's also really good for blood pressure. It's very hydrating. So if anybody's dehydrated, it's very good to hydrate the system. It is cold, so be careful if you tend to have, uh, if cold affects you negatively in the digestive system but it clears phlegm and heat as well and is particularly good for some for whooping cough um, in children and um, mung beans are also cooling um, they clear heat but they also help uh, clear damp not just in the lungs but also in the spleen so they're very good for addressing uh, damp in the whole body um, and strengthening the digestive system so they're a good um, uh, but again, remember they're cold. So if somebody has already got a lot of coldness in the stomach, and when somebody has a lot of coldness in the stomach, they might get cramping easily after eating certain foods. They find it hard to digest things. The bowels might be a bit loose. Um, and also they might feel it's hard to warm up sometimes, that they tend to be a little more colder than other people. And if that's the case, then they need to be careful of having too much cold foods. So you would pick um, ones that would be more warming. Um, so um, alpha sprouts also really good, dispels damp, also strengthens the digestive system. So not just damp and phlegm in the lungs, but just also the whole, the whole digestive system and lifts it up. Parsnips are really good also to clear damp. Um, 
dispel wind. And so when we talk about wind, we talk about a pathogen coming in with wind brings it into the body. So this can help um, move that wind out. And wind also makes things move around in the body. So if there's painful, if people get pains, arthritis, and it moves around, then that's considered a wind type thing. And parsnips can be quite good to clear that kind of pain, stop that pain from that wind and damp. And damp creates a heaviness, so you have a heavy feeling in the body. Um, it's also really good for blood clotting, so helps you know, eliminate that blood clotting. Rosemary um, is a herb that is quite common and people have it in their garden. Also clears heat, um, clears damp. Um, and phlegm and can clear phlegm in the lungs. And, you know, even if you like to use aromatherapy oils or you have some fresh and you put it in the bath or make a tea of it, um, soak your feet in it can all help um, uh, use that. But use it in your cooking as well is really good. Um, uh, mustard leaves are warm, so they clear cold um, phlegm out of the lungs. Um, mustard leaves. Um, also, the mustard seeds are very good for the digestive system and clearing some of the cold in the digestive system, but um, also very good to use. Um, they help um, phlegm in the lungs, so particularly good if somebody has a cough as well. And there's also a herb in Chinese medicine. Uh, other um, radishes um, as well, like uh, horseradish, uh, diacon, um, they're all also very good and quite warming. Um, and so they can clear that cold and phlegm out of the, um, the lungs and to help lift the lungs and clear those lungs. And um, so there's other, I think I mentioned leeks also clears cold, um, uh, clears the cold. Onions, spring onions, garlic are all really good because they are antibacterial as well. They help with infections. They support the immune system. Um, spring onions, garlic and onions are all part of what we would say the metal element foods. So the lung foods, they're white. And so therefore they're very supportive to the system. They're also pungent by nature and pungent foods help push a pathogen out. So they protect us from the exterior. And when we look at pathogens coming in like colds and flus and viruses, they generally come in the same way. Um, and the immune system comes up and tries to push them out and very quickly they can go in or if we're strong enough or the immune system strong enough, they can push it out. So these foods help push that pathogen out and help support um, uh, and do that. Um, I also um, have cloves there. Now there's loads of different herbs. I'm just giving you ones that are common, um, trying to pick a variety so people um, will, you know, wherever you are, you will have access to some of these foods, but there is a lot of foods. And in the book that um, uh, Jack mentioned that I wrote, I have lists of lots of foods and um, a lot of this information I'm giving you now is in there. Um, cloves are also very good to resolve um, the phlegm um, in, in the system. And then there are other things. Um, uh, peaches, I didn't, um, peaches are also very good. They're astringent, so they keep in the Wei Qi. And if you're perspiring a lot, they're very good to ease that perspiration. So peaches are nice. And um, the herbs then that um, if anybody is herbalist and they like to use herbs as food, um, there's different uh, reishi mushrooms, which are um, Ganoderma. Um, they're quite commonly available now in a lot of health food stores, are really good to boost the immune system. Um, they're um, very good to, um, to make blood and to help make chi as well. And particularly good for people who have asthma or bronchitis, they really support the lung energy. And um, Huang Chi astragalus, um, again, I think in a lot of places we can buy these in capsules or as a Chinese herbalist, I have them raw. I, I cook with them a lot of times, but they're very, it's very good and very important herb in order to support the immune system. It is a Qi tonic. It helps build and support the digestive system, which in turn will help support the immune system. And it's used an awful lot 
um, in order to really help people rejuvenate and recover from chronic illnesses as well. So um, particularly um, good to use. And um, Ren Shen, also very good for the immune system. Um, it's uh, ginseng. Um, you do need to be careful though, because uh, some ginsengs are very hot by nature and that can give people palpitations. And maybe if you're already hot and you have a fever, you might not want to be adding more heat into the equation. So um, just be cautious of that. Um, but there is another herb called Dong Shang that's very similar, Codenopsis. And that um, is not as warm, it's not as hot, it's not as strong. It's a milder version of um, the Dong Sheng. Um, there's also um, Trichosanthus uh, Tianwan Fan is really good because it um, benefits the lungs, it clears heat, but it's really hydrating. And so you don't want to get dehydrated. We want to support the immune system and keep it boosted. So it is a very good one. It's particularly good for help moistening the lungs. And um, it's also really good when somebody has diabetes and they have a lot of um, thirst and that. And um, it's, it's a particularly good um, herb if you can get it. Uh, um, if you're a herbalist and you can use it, that's great um, to add in um, to the equation. And so what these, what the, the samples of foods, what I'm saying is, is that you can use these foods as medicine. So you wanna have a big variety of foods, but you can add in foods, particularly because you're saying, okay, well, I am a little overweight. My digestive system is a bit sluggish. So I'll avoid the foods that are um, causing the damp. And I'll try to incorporate some radishes and other foods in my diet in order to help break down the, the, the damp and phlegm, but also to help lift and support the digestive system. And equally so with the lungs. And, and again, looking at the foods of the color of that organ becomes really important because wherever your weakness is, then if you incorporate those colored foods in your diet, then you're going to support that organ in some way. And also in Chinese medicine, we would look at how, what a food looks like also is connected to the organ that it would benefit. So we, we would see a, a walnut looks like a brain and it actually is very good for the kidneys and for the brain and, and, and um, brain function. And um, the sweet potato is really good for the digestive system, really good for the spleen, and it actually looks like the uh, 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 spleen. So you can see that certain foods that look like an organ actually do benefit the organs, uh, like, for instance, organ meats really benefits those organs. So if there's a weakness in an area, then we try to support that. So what I've done now, I just look at the time. Do, do you have any questions or do you want to ask me any questions, Cynthia, now? And then... Um... Yeah, sure. Can you hear me, Deirdre? I, I can, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so we do have a few questions. Okay. I would say the most common question was about caffeine. So I'll ask that one first. Um, some people were concerned about the caffeine and green tea. They wanted to know, is it detrimental? What can they drink with the green tea to diminish the caffeine effect? whether matcha or yerba mate could be good green tea options for people because they're more gently caffeinated. So if you can speak. Yes, to that. definitely the more gentler decaffeine, the more gentler ones are better and maybe don't have green tea later in the day. Now I, um, I'm not a big connoisseur in green tea. Green tea is something that I've recently started to make myself drink during the day in the, um, because it's something that I, I'm not a tea drinker. Um, but caffeine, um, too much of caffeine will definitely affect how somebody's going to sleep. And particularly at this time when we're not moving around and we're not using up that energy, it's just that caffeine's just going to give you that sort of uh, edgy kind of energy. So I would definitely keep it weak and, and maybe have it earlier in the day. And um, coffee is bitter and so if somebody has a lot of fire and they're that kind of fire energy sometimes bitter bitter foods can help that and so um you know bitter foods support the fire energy um and so and also can be quite cooling so sometimes a little bit of bitter is okay um but again early in the day um 
I'm not, I mean, one of the things I want to do is, and I'm sorry, I'm not able to answer that question very well, is I want to learn more about green teas because the more I, when I started writing the book and the more I started to look into tea, um, I started to realize what incredible benefits they were. So I'm, a, I'm acquiring a taste for it now myself. Matcha, I think is quite strong. And I think you have to be careful drinking that later in the day. Does that um, yeah, great. Uh, speaking of the book, um, one person asked, can you talk a little bit just to find what is Yang Shen? Okay. So yeah, Yang Shen is, um, it's basically, it translates to nurture and to nourish oneself and um, to nourish and be nourished in life. And it's about the principles of balance and that not everybody is exactly the same. So we, we live in, an, in a world today where everything is trying to be standardized and fixed and we all should be doing this and this is the latest fashion and we all should be wearing this color lipstick. And, you know, we're, 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 we've lost that individuality. And Yang Sheng is very much about, as a practitioner, looking at the person in front of you and looking at them, at their life. What kind of job do they do? Are they a mother or father? Uh, you know, are they running a business or working for somebody else? Do they have a relationship? Uh, what's their health? Uh, what foods do they like? And work with them to really help give them the advice and, and the recommendations that they need. Not everybody needs to do the same thing. And, you know, we have this thing um, that everybody should be giving up sugar and giving up wheat and giving up dairy. Some people can manage dairy okay. And some people don't do very badly on wheat. They might need to focus on other things. And so it's very much about individualizing, but it's also about looking at the uh, our spiritual and emotional uh, development as well and and how we interact with people and what makes us happy. Uh, it's very important that we find what makes us happy in our lives and what buzzes us in our lives uh, because that's about creativity and we are creative beings and so it's about helping people find that and also you know looking at how we interact with other people, other cultures very much about individualizing and as a practitioner it's it, for me it's very important because I don't look at the condition I don't look at the disease the person's coming in I try to look at the person and that's why face reading is very good as well because I can see what's going on inside and therefore maybe be able to direct people in a better way that's more sustainable as opposed to short changes until they feel better and then we go back. So it, it looks at our environment we live in, the foods that we're eating in that environment. For instance, we know that strawberries and kiwis are very high in vitamin C. So any foods right now that would be very high in vitamin C would be very good for us. But I live in Ireland and we don't grow kiwis. So for me, it would be better for me to eat the strawberries and the berries and not eat the kiwis. And the people who live in the, the, like in Australia, New Zealand and other places where they go kiwi, because it's part of their environment and it's part of where they live. So their body and their energy is connected to that environment and connected to the foods that grow in that environment, the people they meet in that environment. So it's very much about working within the seasons in the environment we're in. And I think, you know, this whole virus and the lockdown and the changes are going to bring us more into being more connected with our environment and eating the foods from our where we're from, eating the foods in, in, uh, in season. So it, it incorporates a whole lot of stuff, but it's um, that's basically kind of in a nutshell what it would be. Um, what it is. It's very old tradition that uh, a famous uh, doctor, Sun Si Miao, really was the one to really bring it into main, into practice and talk about it and talk about the importance of it and the importance of being individual, even though we are an eclectic and we're all connected, we're also still individual. Okay, and so we had some questions about autoimmunity. So for somebody who has, for instance, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, they may want to avoid astragalus wang chi, but are some mm. of the, some of the immune strengthening foods and herbs 
safer for people who have autoimmune conditions or less safe? Yeah, so, the, and that's why I think food is really good because if you look at the, if, if you focus on diet, it's going to be better. And, and a lot of the foods that can be like, uh, a lot of the foods that can be negative for somebody with a thyroid, like if with, you know, taking too much iodine with seaweeds and stuff, it's very hard to get a large quantity of that in when you're eating a wide variety of foods. So you're getting a little bit, but not enough to throw somebody off balance. So I definitely think focusing on foods rather than herbs. I mentioned the herbs here because, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking there might be some herbalists here that might want to do it, but definitely I would stick with the foods because they're safer, you know, and you'd need to take big quantities of certain foods to actually, you know, have a very negative effect. So variety is important. But we do have more questions, Deirdre, but I want to respect the PowerPoint that you have. So okay. I'll leave it to you whether you want to take more questions now or whether you want to move forward with the PowerPoint, um, because we can also um, answer questions in writing afterwards if we need to. And how much time do I have left, Cynthia? We've got 10 minutes left. 10 minutes. Okay. Well, why don't I just, um, I have very little, uh, I'll, I'll finish off what I was going to talk about and then I can answer more questions. You know. Um, yeah. And um, so what I did was what I... What I did is because I knew that some people weren't going to be Chinese practitioners and therefore just looking at the foods, I thought I would bring it into a more mainstream way of looking at it by looking at the, the vitamin C, vitamin D and zinc. Now, these are three particular her, uh, vitamins that are and, and minerals that are very good for our immune system and would be very good for us to recommend for our patients and our family and friends to be taking um, all, you know, right now and all the time as much as possible in order to support the system. Now, as a practitioner of um, Chinese medicine and a Chinese nutritionist, I'm not able to prescribe supplements to my patients. So I use food and, and give them the lists of foods that are high in those, um, in those supplements. So I did that here as well. You know, there's an awful lot of information about vitamin C being used intravenously um, in treating the coronavirus and also for treating a lot of other um, conditions uh, like a certain cancers and stuff like that. And it's a really important um, antioxidant. It supports the immune system. It also helps the body fight infections and particularly connected to respiratory infections. So I think it's a, a really important uh, um, we should be taking it. Now, they say the recommended daily dose is actually quite small, but if you're fighting something, it's I think it's 75 to 120 milligrams um, a day. But if you're fighting something and your body's fighting, I think we can up it uh, a little higher. But if we just are eating plenty of the foods, and then we're, we're going to be um, doing well. What I've done is I've listed the foods in relationship to um, how high they are in vitamin C. So the gravas, the strawberries, these are higher uh, and have high quantities of the vitamin C in it. And as I go down, I've, they're smaller amounts. So I just decided to do it that way. And as I said, you know, when we look at kiwis and we look at when we look at guava and we look at strawberries, again, it's to try and eat the foods that are in our environment. Um, when our foods are moved around, I know kiwi is also very high in vitamin C and we get kiwi over here and, and I do often recommend it. But the problem is because it travels and it also gets x-rayed and rayed, whatever happens when they go through, um, immigrant, you know, when they're moving it from one country to the other, um, it actually weakens its potency. And that's why having the food nearer and more, con more in our environment actually um, is, is, is very helpful. But um, guava is very high in vitamin C. And then you've got your strawberries and your other berries and your cantaloupes. Um, they're also, um, blueberries are also really good because they're anti-inflammatory and they're also very high antioxidants. So they're also really good for circulation, protecting us against free radicals, which will also help with puring, the, uh, keeping the blood circulating and, and uh, protecting um, the immune system. Um, papaya is mentioned there. Papaya is, uh, even though it's not native to Ireland, it can be used um, 
for digestive problems because it's got natural enzymes, uh, digestive enzymes in it. So papaya is um, uh, high in vitamin C, but also really good for the digestive system. Um, red, red peppers um, are very good, but um, I see it's peppers are spelled wrong there. Um, but red peppers are high, higher in vitamin C. So the more red um, than your, um, than the green ones. Um, kale, I just want to have kale in there. Kale also very good, but kale also is really good for calming the uh, calming what we say the shen, the spirit. And I think any foods as well that help calm and relax us are really good because this is a very stressful time. It's a lot of anxiety. And um, in Chinese medicine, we talk about the spirit and the shen. Um, getting disturbed and therefore it might affect our sleep, it might make us anxious. And so kale actually being one of my favorite vegetables um, is really good also. Um, it's very calming and helps calm the, the heart and the spirit and the shen down. Um, then zinc is another one and zinc um, is also really important. Um, it's really important for like over 300 different activities um, in the body and so very good but one of them is it helps maintain our immune system and it helps uh, the tissues in the body recover and heal well and so um, unlike vitamin C, zinc comes more, is higher in uh, shelled fish and in meats than it is in vegetables. But it is high, um, it, there is good quantity of it in seeds like uh, your pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, squash seeds. Um, cacao powder also um, has a good amount of zinc as well as magnesium, which magnesium is very good for relaxing the body. Um, spinach um, is one of those um, foods that is good for all the organs. Um, so unless you've got high ureic acid issue, um, spinach is uh, a very good um, uh, vegetable to have, as well as your broccoli and um, your, um, you see your garlic there is also high in vitamin C. I think one oyster will give you your whole zinc for the day because zinc is um, the body, um, it, it doesn't require a lot of it. So uh, um, you, yeah, I think it's only 12 to eight milligrams or, or, um, is all you need a day. But um, I think um, an oyster will give you all of it. <laughs> um, your vitamin D then um, is important um, going out in the sun. And um, they have found that in places where, like in California, there's been a lot of vitamin D deficiency over the years. And that's because people don't expose themselves enough out in the sun. We put a lot of sunblock on and it's the same. We, we get quite a lot of vitamin D because most of us who go out, we don't put block on most of the time because the sun isn't shining, but it, we're in daylight and sunlight. And so that's very important. And um, But some of the foods that are uh, high in your vitamin D would be your cod liver oils and your other fatty fishes like your salmon, your tuna, mackerel, and um, also uh, beef liver and lamb's liver, egg yolks and um, mushrooms, white mushrooms particularly um, have uh, vitamin D in them. And so um, important to, um, to have. And um, I put this on at the end here because, you know, um, in doing face reading and doing five elements, we look at the different elements and people know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished. Uh, I hope it's okay. That, uh, but I just thought I'd mention this. It's a bit of fun. And um, we all have all the, say that again. It's fine to go over by a few minutes. Don't worry okay. about it. Thank you. I just, this, cause this kind of it make, it's kind of nice uh, and light. And uh, I thought it would be fun, but um, in the five elements, you know, the idea is that like food that we have all the elements, we have all the colors and um, the five elements, um, we want to be and have all of those elements in us. And so there's a balance with all the elements. And then that's the whole thing about the five elements is that we're in balance with them. And we don't, it's very hard to be and, and very few people are balanced in all of them, but we tend to be one element more stronger than another or one or two of them. But people who are of the water element in regards to the lockdown and staying at home, 
well, might find it actually quite easy because they do like to stay in bed. They do like to daydream and read and hang around. Water flows and it, it kind of goes with the flow and goes along with things. So they may not find it so hard as, as somebody else like a, a wood person uh, would. And um, what's good about this time for people who are water people who have not really stopped and, um, and have been living very busy lives, this will be a time where they can become more, uh, it strengthens the kidney because the water is the kidney element, but it also where they might become more creative because water is creative. It's imaginative. It's, um, it, it's about accessing wisdom and imagination. So uh, I think for water people, it would be very good. Wood type people uh, tend to like to always be going and doing and moving and they like to be in charge and they certainly don't like to be stuck indoors. They need a lot of physical activity. They need to be doing things. So I think trying to make sure that if you're a wood person that you get some form of exercise, whether it's on your screen or if you can get out, get, get to a bit of greenery and do that because there would be a tendency for them to get a bit frustrated more easily um, and not, um, yeah, and, and, and so being in nature, I think, is very important for the wood person. Um, they like to be productive, so they might start doing things and getting stuck into a project around the house. Let them do it. It'll be good. Fire people also um, will probably do well around this time because they, again, like change and they like changing things. Fire is all here one minute over there the next minute. So fire people like to, um, to um, change and change things up, but they also like occasions and they also like parties and they like to be social. So they'll maybe get more involved in um, social things online and um, dressing up, um, you know, doing things, uh, organizing Skype um, parties and things like that with their friends um, because they like to be um, social. And if they can't be social, that can be very difficult for a fire person. They also can be very messy and chaotic. So if you're not a fire person and you're living with the fire person, that might be a little bit hard. So um, it uh, we need the yeah, need to find space if you're uh, not a fire person living with a fire person. And um, earth element also will do very well. Um, earth people like to um, be at home, be with their families. They love baking and cooking. They like to feed everybody, but they will suffer a little bit because they can't have physical contact, hugging. Um, it'll be hard, the social distancing, particularly for their loved ones, that will be quite difficult. But they'll be making food for everybody, um, feeding everybody. Um, and they'll also be well, really stocked up, you know. Um, the earth element people have a good pantry full of food and they're all stocked up. The metal element and each of these elements for those who are not uh, Chinese practitioners are also related to the different organs. So it, 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 there is connections there as well. But metal people are very good at being alone. They're very contained. They like space, but they like lots of space. Um, they like their own space. And they also are very easy. They much better dealing with people on a one on one. So they will find it a little easier not doing the multiple party Skype things, but just talking individually with their friends. Um, they also probably will do a lot of clearing and uh, clearing clutter because metal people don't like clutter. And um, they tend to be a little bit future orientated. So that can be hard on the lungs because they will grieve and be projecting what if in the future, um, you know, what's it going to be? They'll be more future looking and, and, that, and not in the present. So that could be hard on the lungs. And the reason I'm mentioning the lungs is because, again, the lungs are really important for our immune system. So if you are somebody who is a metal type person, who is a minimalist, uh, likes uh, alone time, likes empty spaces, not clutter, then also just be very careful not to be um, grieving for the future, looking to uh, the future, but be more present right now and you'll do better in that. Um, so, um, I think that was everything. I had um, 
gosh, that went um, very good time. There's just, I, I, I'm finished now, but I just want to mention um, a couple of other things. Selenium, vitamin A, and quercetin are also three supplements that um, you get in food um, that would also be very good for the immune system right now. But um, we don't have time to talk about them, but if you eat all the foods that we talked about earlier, you're gonna get those in it because they're in most of those foods as well. Um, so we can have some questions now and apologies for going over. That was okay. just... I've never done this before, so it's kind of... <laughs> yeah. You did really, really great. I really appreciate not only the information that you presented that was kind of technical in nature, but the presentation of the silver lining behind what's obviously a difficult situation, certainly not something that we would wish for, but something that is part of Yangshan and that's kind of, you know, making the lemonade out of lemons and making the best of a, of, a, of a bad situation. So I really appreciate you bringing that spirit to this presentation. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, we'll take additional questions and we'll post the answers to them on our blog. Okay. okay. As well as a resource to figure out what element uh, you or, or your clients may be. So people are interested, they can check there for that. And then lastly, um, John Chen will pre be presenting uh, a sequel to his amazing uh, Chinese herbs and, and COVID presentation here at our YouTube channel on um, Friday, April 30th, 2020 at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So a couple of days from now, um, you can catch the follow-up to that. Um, I really want to thank you again, Siddhartha. This was a yeah. really great time. Um, I, I guess one of the silver linings of this is that this technology allows us to bring people together from mm -hmm. all over the world. So here I am in California, you're in Ireland, yeah. some 10,000 miles away, and yet we can talk to each other and people can I post know. questions to you. So it's um, good. It's and in regards to what you were saying about the five elements, um, if people had been listening to Lillian last week, um, mm -hmm. in her book, she has a questionnaire, um, a Chinese face reading. There's a questionnaire that if you answer it, you'll get a sense of what element you are. But I might be able to get uh, permission to give for you to put that um, maybe up or something or. That I would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. In fact, I just heard from Lillian. She and I share the same birthday, which happens to be today. So today we thank you. Birthday. We thank you for that wonderful <laughs> present you've just given me. So, uh, and Lillian. So um, I think we'll uh, uh, call, wrap it up now. And um, again, people can post questions, but, or, or okay, the questions that I've have been posted. Yeah, I'll answer can, those questions. In writing, so. yeah. So thanks okay. everyone for coming. Um, and thank and you again for inviting me. Thank you, take care. Take care everybody, mind Bye. yourselves. Anyway.